Hello, welcome to Renegade Con Live Art with the legendary and talented Dan Mora. I'm your host, Anita Olmos Osborne. I am the Director of Visual Design at Renegade Game Studios. For those of you who may not be familiar with his work, Dan is a world-famous comic book artist who does his own pencils, inking, and coloring. He won an Eisner Award at San Diego Comic-Con back in 2016, and he has been on fire ever since. He has worked with DC Comics, Marvel, IDW, Boom Studios, Warner, Disney, and of course, Renegade Game Studios. He has il- he has illustrated just about every Power Ranger in existence. He's done Batman Superman World's Finest, Hexed, Klaus, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Once and Future, The Terrifics, Flash, and tons more. We are so delighted to have him here with us today. And just so you guys all know, Dan and I will be chatting in Spanish or my Spanglish. (laughs) Do not worry, though. I will do my best to translate everything said into English for you. Full disclosure, I'm not a professional translator or a video streamer, so I guarantee to have mess ups along the way. My apologies in advance. (laughs) I am an art director and have had the opportunity to work with Dan on several projects for Renegade Power Rangers, Heroes of the Grid Games. So with that, I'd like to welcome Dan Mora. Bienvenido, Dan. Hi, hi, everyone. Thank you for inviting me. Very Thank happy for, to, to be here. Thank you for being with us. We're very excited to have you on the show. Um, we chatted with you in 2020. It seems that you have been very busy since then. What have you been up to? I've been uh, working in, with uh, Batman mostly, and uh, now I'm doing Shazam, Batman, Superman, and I, I I I keep working with Power Rangers because that's something that I, that I really like. So, and a lot a lot of stuff uh, that I'm doing, <laughs> but but yeah, that, that's just a couple of things. Awesome. Very cool. Um, and we are very excited to have you draw some Power Rangers for us today. Um, what the audience and I get a special treat today, as everyone knows, we're doing a light art session. We get to witness the creative drawing process that is Dan Mora. Dan, what do you think you'll draw for us today? I, I'm going to draw my favorite ranger. Is the Red Ranger from Mighty Morphin. So... Yeah, I, I just wanted to, to do something that I really like. And that's, he's my favorite character, so. Awesome. I can't wait to see it. Okay, so um, do you want to kind of walk us through? You can do it in either English or Spanish um, and just kind of show us kind of what your process is like and, and how you go about creating your amazing art pieces. Okay, okay. I'm going to try to speak as much as I can in English, but if I get like a little uh, stuck, so I, I I will start speaking Spanish and you can help me. Thank I will you, help uh, you as much as help. I can. <laughs> we'll do our best. Yeah, we definitely don't want to disturb your process. Um, I know it's hard to try to translate from Spanish to English as you're trying to get into your, your zone. So do you want me to share my screen? Yeah, let's see it. Okay, let me see that. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> uh, there, uh, stop. Where, where is it? More. Mm. Do you know where is the, the, donde está el botón para compartir? No. Oh, on Zoom. Uh, uh-huh. Um, yo creo que está under, oh, and more. Uh-huh. Are you this a share screen? No, this is record. Record on this computer. Recording in progress. Oops. Aquí está. Let me see. <laughs> uh, pause. Stop. Mm. This data. Let me see. Recording stopped. Uh, Just a few minutes in. while Dan looks through his... Um, Menus to see where he can share his screen. Um, let's see. Abajo. Abajo de la pantalla. Mm-hmm. ¿Está en español o en inglés en tu lado? Está, está en inglés, pero este, cuando le doy more, dice grabar. 
pero no me sale share. Um, ahí debe de decir mute, stop video, participants, chat, and then share. Chat, this is chat, show chat previews, record on this computer, record to the cloud. Y esas son las opciones que tengo. Qué okay. raro. Debe ser, no sé qué raro, qué raro. Shows. Let's see. Ah, show. Show video. Spotlight. Pero también, Danny, si tienes una cámara extra, lo puedes poner para que podamos ver tu pantalla también. Uh, cámara extra. No, no, no tengo. Sí. Claro. Bueno, déjeme ver si, si hago esto. También puedes ir um, a Ibra, under edit. Oh, no, that's just, never mind. Kitty, is there another way to share it? Oh. Ay, 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 ay. Sí, share. I found it. Sorry. There's a big, <laughs> a big green button, and I, I don't know why. No sé por qué no lo vi. Multiple, uh, le doy multiple participantes, ¿verdad? Sí. And for all of you watching at home, this is the reality of what we go through, even when we get like a creative brief or <laughs> anything that's technical, we need to like work through those problems and then make sure that we we hit our deadlines and get the best work out of all of our illustrators. So this is kind of an insight to the process, if you will. Uh, puede ver. Can, can sí, see ahora sí, muy screen? bien. Okay. Yes, yes, we see it great. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I was uh, sketching uh, something so I can do most um, in in the hour we have. Perfect. So, okay, okay. Let me see. So, do you have some questions for for this stage of the drawing? Yeah, I'm I'm doing the the quick uh, pencils like a quick sketch. Yeah. Are, do you start with just a blank screen on? On the computer, or do you sketch anything out by hand first? No, I if I'm working in the computer, I I do everything in the computer. Nice. Yes. Yeah. And I think I can I can start working on the pencils and then the inks. Yeah. Bueno, puedo brincarme los lápices y tal vez brincar de una vez a, a las tintas para, para poder ponerle color. So, he's going over it um, in dark lines, that way he can add color later. Um, he's making sure those lines are connected so that they fill. The way a lot of these programs work, um, if there's an opening, the color will leak out, if that makes sense to some of you. Y Dan, um, is this what comes easier for you, the drawing or the coloring after your drawing is done? I I think the drawing is easier. Well, sometimes sometimes the coloring is more difficult. It, it depends. Every time is is different, I think. But yeah, the color can can get um, really tricky depending on, on what you're doing. And what do you prefer? Do you prefer drawing 
on the computer digitally or on paper? It depends on uh, if I have uh, enough time to work. If I have enough time and, and, and it is something that I really like, I prefer doing a uh, traditional in paper. But if I don't have too much time, uh, I have to, to deliver the final illustration uh, soon. So I prefer to do it. Uh, I pre prefer working on digital. But yeah, the, uh, it depends on uh, how much time do, do I have. Sure. Mm -hmm. I have a, uh, I have, I, I have toys. So I have the, the helmets for, for reference from the toys. So I, I put the helmet in the, the pose that I want to, um, and then start drawing. But uh, the, with Power Rangers, the most difficult thing are the helmets. So I, I didn't didn't want it to to spend a lot of time doing the helmet, and I I wanted to 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 be able to draw um, a, a big image and not just the helmet. Mm -hmm. So th that's why I did the the first the the quick sketch first. So I can be sure that I can do more than just the, the, the helmet. So a lot of times, and I think some of our, our audience on chat are wondering um, if you've drawn helmets so much where like you don't have to draw a big circle or a big oval to kind of like map it out. No, no, no. It's so I, much um, that you kind of already I, know the shape. Yeah, but I, I did it for... Uh, for a long time, that was the way that I used to work, but uh, now I don't don't use it anymore. But it's because I feel like I it's something that you have in your head because you you did it so many times that you your brain do it uh, do it lo hace solo digamos sin sin necesidad de de volver a repetir todo el proceso. Yeah, so he's done it so much that he's so familiar with the shape that he doesn't. It just comes natural to him now. He's been doing it for so long. We do have another question from the chat. Dan, do you use a digital pad or are you using um, a Wacom tablet or a mouse? What are you, are you drawing straight on the screen? Uh, I'm drawing, I don't, uh, I, I'm using a Cintiq. So I use a, a, my, my pen for the Cintiq. I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of like, like, um, it's like I have one of little... these. It doesn't actually draw on my hand, uh -huh. but it will draw on a pad. Yeah. Uh -huh. Something like yeah. that. It's a lot more natural, I guess. Yes, with, with this, you can feel the pressure. And uh, it's, it's easier. Nice. And you can control the pen, the pen, uh, the way the pen draws, the thickness, um, the trail, the type of stroke it is, um, if it's rough, if it's smooth, all those things come into play. Just like if you were changing brushes uh, on a table with live paper and paint. Mm -hmm. Dan, where do you find inspiration for your drawings? Uh, like when when I'm tired or or, or uh, every time. What, what, what do you mean? Uh, because what, what, when I'm tired and I don't want to to draw, I just my inspiration is just to to keep drawing because I have to do it. And, <laughs> and sometimes, if I feel blocked, I I like to to watch a movie, to play a video game. I like to go to the theater. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's the, 
the things that uh, help my brain to to relax and to see different uh, things and then i can have like new ideas or something like that excellent inspiration from outside love it um, so I'm curious, Dan, since you've been drawing for Renegade, we have you draw box covers and cards and game boards, um, all sorts of stuff for us. What takes more time um, as far as comparing to a comic book, a single card that you have drawn for us or a single panel for a comic book? Is it the same? amount of time and effort or is it a little different uh is i think the card takes me more time because i i do the colors mm -hmm. and uh, but it, it depends because sometimes you have like a big panel from a comic and it's an action panel with a lot of characters with a lot of background and a lot, a lot of stuff is happening and people have reactions and everything so uh, those panels are uh, harder, but uh, compared to the regular panels and to small panels, uh, and doing the cards is more difficult. So most comic books, most comic book panels are, you have a colorist do all those? Uh, yeah, I, I, I color my 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 work for the covers, but uh, my interior art, I have, uh, I usually have a uh, colorist and that helped me. Awesome. Because I, I, it, it, I, I couldn't, no, no, no lo lograría, digamos, este, colorear y hacer todo lo, lo que hago, mm -hmm. eh, ajá, y, y colorearlo yo, digamos. So Dan's saying that he does a ton of work for comic books and he wouldn't be able to accomplish as much as he would if he was doing it all himself. So normally for comic books panels, he is penciling and drawing it and someone else is doing the coloring on those. Where when he does work for a renegade, we are lucky enough to have him do the, the inks and the coloring all by Dan. Um, so we feel very special to have that work from him. Um, let's see, where are you on your drawing there, Dan? It's looking really good. Uh, perdón, no está poniendo atención. Oh, está bien. <laughs> Estaba concentrado. Es que lo, Qué lo bueno. Que pasa, lo que pasa a veces es que estoy como metido en algo y se, se bloqueó todo, entonces no, no, no puse atención. ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo me dijiste, perdón? Uh, so Dan's just saying that he didn't hear the last question I asked him because he was he was buried um, in this drawing and a lot of times when he's drawing, he'll block everything out around him. <laughs> and so he's fully immersed into um, his, his drawing. So, so that's what he's doing right now, but he's also trying to talk to us, which I know is very difficult. So thank you, Dan. Um, so I was just asking Dan um, what stage of his sketch he's doing right now. He's still going over some of his light blockouts um with uh, heavy inks yeah uh, right now i'm doing the the inks yeah um, uh, i uh, i me me brinqué la etapa del del boceto este detallado y, y empecé a hacer las las tintas que son los bota los botados los bocetos detallados sigamos sí, este I, I usually do like a quick sketch that is this, this is the quick sketch. Then I do like a tight pencil, but I jumped that part and I jumped to, to the inks that this is the inks. Okay. Uh -huh. Now that I did the, the general strokes and um, I, I can start and doing some textures. And uh, maybe adding some some blacks in place. Yes. Excellent. 
And for all of, for everyone watching, he is only working in black right now. Um, the color will come later. And that's very typical for comic book art, as everyone knows, if you're a fan of Dan, um, that's the style he uses. Um, I see on the chat, someone's asking if this will be used in a future game. And it w very likely will be. <laughs> I think we'd love to put it into one of our games. It's looking awesome already. Mm -hmm. A lot of the shading he's adding right now is adding depth. It's adding drama. Estás cambiando de the people sí, estoy, that... estoy usando, uh -huh, another kind of brush. I, I use different brushes depending on uh, what, what texture I am trying to do. And uh, depending on what te technique I want to use. Because you can have the same effect with different techniques for, for the shadows. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing the muscles like that, do you give, um, reference to particular actors like uh different like you try to do you try to model it after the actual actor from power rangers in no, the comic no, book no 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 i i never tried to to do the 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 a portrait for uh for the actors i i just tried to do uh like if they were a cartoon a cartoon character mm -hmm. uh, like I try to, to imagine the characters if they were from a TV show, uh, from animation, uh, from an animation show. So I, I I don't try to to repeat the the likeness from the actors. It's looking very cool so far. Do you find yourself working on bodies first normally and then the head or does it change? I I usually start with the head, with the eyes, well the head, the general head, then the uh, quick sketch for the for the figure and then I uh, uh, keep uh, working in in the with uh, I start working in the eyes, and then the the nose and the mouth. And uh, este, y agrego los músculos y todo hasta el puro final. Digamos. So he'll work on the muscles usually last to define them. Yo creo que ya puedo empezar a poner color. Well, now he's going to start dropping in some color. Ya casi, ya casi. Un segundito. A ver. Ahora para el color. Um, creo una capa nueva y la pongo en multiply. So he's doing a new layer and he's going to have it multiply. Dan, do you normally keep all of your characters on the same layer, like all the inks on one layer, or does each character get its own layer? Uh, I, antes lo hacía todos en el mismo layer. 
pero cuando me empecé a dar cuenta que, que a veces es muy útil tenerlos en diferentes layers, entonces los empecé, empecé a separar. So he used to have all of his characters on one layer, but it got a little difficult to manage them, so he started putting them all on separate layers for a little bit more flexibility. So to, I'll take to, a question. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Dan. No, that I have to to close uh, all the the strokes. To, to tengo que cerrar todos los puntos para que poder seleccionar la figura y que no se me salga el color. Entonces, eso es lo que está haciendo ahorita, corrigiendo unos detalles. Okay. So right now he's going back and he's closing up some of those gaps between the line drawing and the inks. So anywhere he wants to fill color, um, you can kind of think of it as a bucket. If there's any kind of a little gap between those black lines, the color is going to leak out as if water was leaking out or paint was leaking out. So he's just going back and he's correcting all those black lines to make sure that they're all nice and tight. Um, so when he drops the color in there, the color fill, it stays within the sections that he is trying to keep them in. I do have a question from the chat. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see, Matt DeWater, you're asking, now that you've worked on such big name characters like Batman and Superman, um, do you still enjoy a chance to come back and draw the Power Rangers? Claro, claro, yes. <laughs> yes, the, yes uh, the, the Power Rangers are, are my, one of my favorite characters. And um, I have so many good memories uh, from my childhood. Así que sí, sí, me encanta. Son, son una parte muy importante de mi, de mi niñez y cada vez que los dibujo revivo un poco. Uh, so the, the Power Rangers are a really important part of his childhood. So every time he gets to draw them, it's like he's reliving a part of his, of his childhood. Ay, y ahora que estoy, ahora estoy haciendo la Tortuga Ninja con los Power Rangers en el crossover, este, yeah, it's, it's a dream come true to, uh, to, to draw these two characters, uh, these two teams, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, with the Rangers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so for those of you who may not be aware, uh, a comic book just dropped earlier this week, I think it was Monday, um, where we had a crossover, not us. Um, there was a comic book crossover between Power Rangers and Teenage Ninja Mutant, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, so he said that was like a dream for him to be able to draw that with the Power Rangers. Um, his kids are going crazy with it. No, they would be going crazy with it, right? <laughs> Oh, there's a good question on the chat. Does where does um te voy a preguntar en español primero? Um está preguntando si es difícil cuando los Power Rangers tienen uh, el casco para para tener emoción en el caricatura. So they're asking on the chat, mm -hmm. um, Jingle Bells, uh, if it's difficult to convey emotion when these Power Ranger characters are wearing their helmets. I think that's a great question. Sí, sí, es, es bastante difícil. Yo lo que hago es este, hacerle un hueco, digamos, aquí, por ejemplo, en el visor. Uh -huh. Y aquí aprovecho y hago, tengo la, aprovecho el espacio para hacer el, el ojo, digamos, la reacción del ojo. So it's a great question. He says, yes, it's very difficult to show emotion with a helmet on, as you can imagine. So what he does as he's doing right now is he'll do a little, a little hole in the reflection of the helmet. 
And that way you can kind of see his eye. So a lot of his drawings, you'll see one eye kind of piercing through the helmet screen um, so that you can get a little bit more of just a little more emotion out of the character. It's kind of one of his tricks that he uses to, to convey emotion. Loving it. Looking great, Dan. The hands are also showing a lot. They're in tough, tight fists. Looking good. Um, let me get back to some of my questions. Um, what was the most valuable thing you learned in art school, Dan, or has a lot of it been in your professional experience? Está, está difícil. Este, creo que lo que creo que lo más importante que aprendí en las en la universidad fue eh, a aprender a observar, este, porque eh, uno uno tiende a repetir las formas. Y las ideas que tiene en la cabeza, pero no exactamente lo que está viendo. Por ejemplo, por ejemplo, digamos, si a veces vamos a dibujar un árbol, tendemos a repetir la forma básica de un árbol, que es lo que sabemos desde pequeñito que eso es. Entonces, aunque estemos, tengamos el árbol al frente y estemos dibujando el árbol, repetimos el icono que tenemos en la memoria de un árbol. O, cuando, o una persona, que sabemos que una persona es una bolita, ¿verdad? Y repetimos eso. Entonces, eh, creo que lo que uno aprende en la universidad es eh, separar esas ideas y empezar a observar y ver las formas reales. No sé si me, me expliqué. <risa> Fue complicado. So Dan is saying that the most important, the most valuable thing he learned in art school was to learn how to observe your subjects. Um, for example, he gave an example of a tree. We've all been drawing trees since we were young kids. And so if you're trying to draw a tree that you are looking at, it's hard to let go of the way you've been drawing trees your whole life instead of just looking at the tree that's in front of you and then drawing that, what you actually see instead of what you know. So mm -hmm. removing the memorized habit i guess like your habit of uh -huh, drawing uh -huh. a tree one way that way you learn that way you actually draw exactly what's in front of you to let let go of the the things you've been doing out of habit you see the algo mal me dices no 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 lo, lo explico lo explico perfecto gracias But as you aprender a observar, learning to watch is one of the most valuable things, I think, for, yeah. for, for artists. Yes. And, um, With So I got to ask you, Dan, since I have you here, um, there's been a lot of controversy about AI art. How do you feel about that? Uh, de lo que creo es que, que poco a poco el, 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 el humano va perdiendo la creatividad, digamos. Cada vez se va se va haciendo más, 
cada vez nos esforzamos menos por, por hacer y crear cosas entonces sí creo que es muy difícil detenerlo, es algo que va a pasar y que no podemos evitarlo uh -huh. pero sí siento que es, es como la, la lente muerta la, 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 la muerte lenta de, de, la, de la creatividad ahí va poco a poco cada vez extinguiéndose un poquito más que la computadora artificial no se está matando. <risa> la creatividad. La creatividad. So, um, so he kind of feels, he feels a little bit that uh, AI art is, since it's computer based, that it's kind of killing our creativity as humans. Um, so, you know, there's no way to stop it, but it's coming. So we all have to kind of learn to work with it and try to uh, work with it in, to our advantage as we best can. But um, but obviously, Dan is all for um, hand done work and mm -hmm. and not AI art. <laughs> uh -huh. Exactly. Um, ¿Y tu favorito Power Ranger es el rojo de...? Sí, el rojo. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Dan's favorite Power Ranger is the Red Ranger. Sí, siempre fue mi favorito. De... De los Mighty Morphins, sí. The Mighty Morphins. Mm Let's check the chat. If you guys have any questions on the chat, please type them in and I'll try to relay them over to Dan while he's drawing. Um, we're trying to keep him undistracted, <laughs> but, but moving forward, we're going to try to distract you a little more, Dan, with some questions. No, 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 don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here tonight. Someone from the chat is asking your favorite Power Ranger if it's Jason Red or Rocky Red. No, Jason. Jason. <laughs> Excellent. Sí. Yo, soy, soy un nostálgico, digamos, como que me gustan las las primeras versiones de casi todo, entonces. Oh, sí. So he's saying he likes um, most originals from, from most things. So he's very much attached to the first season of Power Rangers. Mm ¿Qué haces cuando terminas de dibujar todo el día? ¿Qué haces para relajar? Eh, juego con mis niños, uh, con mis hijos. Este, me gusta también ver tele con ellos. O me gusta salir a comer con mi familia. Este, me gusta tomar café. Sí, tomar café me desestresa un poquito. Este, bueno, sí, cosas así. No sé, sí. si, puedo, si puedo jugar con los chiquillos, si puedo jugar un videojuego, si, si hay alguna película que ver, pues así me gusta hacer. So I asked him what he likes to do after drawing all day to kind of unwind and relax a little bit. Um, he says he likes to come home and play with his kids and maybe watch TV or a movie with them. Um, he'll drink a cup of coffee that kind of helps him relax a little bit. After all, he is in Costa Rica, right? <laughs> <laughs> good, good Costa Rican coffee. <laughs> ¿Tú trabajas ahí de la casa o trabajas en un, en otro lugar? No, yo trabajo aquí en la casa. Sí, sí. So he's working from home in his home studio. Mm -hmm. Normally. 
Eh, por eso es que mis hijos siempre se aparecen cuando estoy en reuniones. ¿sí? Before we started the stream, his kid came over and, and said hello to me. <laughs> I guess they like to come in and say hi every now and then, which is one of the benefits of him having a home studio. He's got his kids right there. It's amazing. Y ahora que estás mirando en, la, en tu dibujo. Ahora estoy poniendo detalles a las sombras para, para ver los volúmenes, a ver si están correctos. Y entonces eso es lo que estoy haciendo ahorita. So right now he's looking at his drawing. He's looking at some of the details in the shadows. And he's kind of, you can kind of see him zooming in and out a little bit just to make sure that they're all looking correct. Um, trying to balance everything out. Just adding extra details. Ahora, en una capa nueva le intento darle como, como algunos brillos. Now he's adding some highlights, some bright spots, where it's shiny. Uh, ¿qué pro what projects do you have coming? I was going to start speaking in Spanish. <laughs> I'm just asking in English. <laughs> what projects do you have coming up in the future, Dan? That maybe uh, we can share with the audience. Por ahora, soy, bueno, estoy con, con World Finest y voy, estoy trabajando también Chazam. Este... Y creo que por, ahí, por ahora solo, solo eso es, este, y bueno, y todavía hay números que faltan de las Tortugas Ninja y los Power Rangers, uh -huh. pero creo que por ahora solo eso es. Ah, bueno, no, tengo uno de Batman, muy especial, muy importante para mí, pero es, ese no puedo decir nada porque es secreto, pero sí, es, es uno muy importante. <risa> He's got a secret project coming up for Batman that he's very excited about, but he can't talk about. <laughs> but he is working on World's Finest, the Superman, Batman, World's Finest comics and Shazam. Uh -huh. and, and of course, in my the back of my head, I'm thinking, oh, that means there might be an opening to Bookie for Renegade Games. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, email Jeannie and I uh, will... Email Dan every now and then. Do you have time? Do you have time for our games, please? Uh, siempre, siempre intento este, sacar tiempo. Porque me gusta. Y Gracias. digamos, a mis hijos les encantan los juegos. Y, y el, entonces este, es algo que, que me gusta tener aquí en la casa. Entonces, siempre que puedo, yo estoy dispuesto a hacerlo. Oh, that means a lot. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> We're excited about our games, too. Dan's saying that um, he always loves working with Renegade because he loves being able to draw for games that he can play with his kids with, which is why we love our games, right? We get to play with our families, our friends, um, and it's always a treat for him to be able to play with his artwork on a table with his kids. It just it just makes it all full circle. Mm -hmm. Yo creo que... I see someone in the chat, James Sharp, is asking if you always work digitally or do you also work with traditional materials? Um, I think at the beginning of this the show, we did talk a little bit about how you do some work on paper. Mm -hmm. sí, about how, sí. much, how much uh, do you think... ¿Qué cantidad haces en papel y qué cantidad haces... En la computadora. Ajá. Eh, muy poco en realidad, tal vez un, tal vez un 20, un 30% es este tradicional en papel y el resto es digital. 
Pero, y entonces por eso lo que intento hacer es las cosas que más me gustan, más me apasionan, esas las intento hacer este tradicional. Okay. So he says he does about 20 to 30%. Yeah, 20 to 30% traditional on paper. Um and those projects are usually more passionate. Is that right, Dan? Sí. Mm -hmm. Well, for example, uh, if I have to draw a, a panel with people talking, that is not something like exciting. I do it digital, but if, it's, if it is an actual page uh, with Batman and Superman, uh, something like that, or an iconic shot of Batman posing with, uh, uh, with Gotham in the background, something like that, I try to do that traditional and the stuff that is not that exciting i i try to do it digital mm -hmm. well we enjoy all of it <laughs> it's all exciting for us <laughs> okay okay casi estoy listo all right well, okay So he's making some final touch-ups on his drawing, adding some effects. Very cool. Oh, now he's adding some background. Very nice. Do you have any advice for people who are in art school or maybe just young or I guess not necessarily young, but just anybody trying to break into the comic world? Eh, sí, este, bueno, creo que una de las cosas más importantes es eh, si quieres dibujar cómics, eh, hacer cómics, aunque todavía no te contraten, ¿verdad? A veces... Me he topado con personas que tal vez quieren dibujar cómics y entonces uno les pregunta si tienen alguna página de cómics para, para ver cómo trabaja y dicen que no, que no, que no tienen nada que enseñar. O sí. hacen dibujos, pero no están relacionados a, a cómic. Entonces, este, creo que una de las cosas que podría ser importante es, es comenzar a trabajar en cómics, aunque todavía no tenga un, un proyecto, porque así tiene... Así va ganando poco experiencia y así tiene que mostrar el momento que se presente la oportunidad. So he's saying, um, yes, he's got some advice for people who are looking to break into the comic book industry. Um, if you want to draw comics, then draw comics. <laughs> draw comics at home, draw comics anywhere you can, even though you haven't been commissioned to do that work. Um, it totally makes sense. You got to build a portfolio, even if it's not real world used stuff so you just build a portfolio based on anything you can come up with just so you can show start showing that to potential clients um and if you want to draw draw uh any type of type of sorry my phone's going crazy um any type of art that you want to do so if you want to draw comics then start drawing comics and something will work out for you Sí, y lo otro es también ser constante con el dibujo, hacerlo ojalá todos los días, dibujar todos los días. Es, yo he aprendido más en mis años dibujando cómics que lo que aprendí 
en, en mis años de universidad o antes que eso, por, por dibujar todos los días. So he does recommend if you are interested in drawing to draw every day, try to practice as much as you can. Do you have anything to say about the colors that you choose in the background? Did you already have an idea of what colors you might have you were going to use, or is it just kind of completely spontaneous? Sí, estoy estoy inventando. Ahorita no 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 tenía ningún plan. Estoy viendo ahí como qué le puedo agregar. Pero sí, creo que a veces es muy a veces es más más intuitivo, ¿verdad? So he didn't have any plan for the background colors. He's just kind of going at it spontaneously, trying to trying to see what works with what he's created there. So we're almost out of time, Dan. So it's looking amazing. But you let us know when you're done. <laughs> okay, okay. So we'll hang on. Agregarle unos brillitos. Okay. Okay. Uh, I want to make him like he's he's fighting and there is fire around him. At least uh, a, a poquito de juego nada más. Y yo creo que ya me voy a agregar aquí la firma nada más. He's adding his signature right at the bottom there. Amazing. Mm. Yeah, he's <laughs> Super cool. I love it. Muchas gracias, Dan. No, gracias a ustedes. Thank you for walking us through your process. It was such a special treat to see this live. Pretty, pretty cool um, stuff. So thank you so much for, for inviting me and for this opportunity to, to draw a little for you. And for the people that is watching, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, we appreciate your time, Dan. Gracias por su tiempo. Mm -hmm. Thanks to everyone who turned in, who tuned into us tonight. Um, tune in tomorrow for more Renegade Con. Uh, tomorrow, I think the reveals start for Power Rangers at 10 a.m. with Scott. So don't miss it. We're here on YouTube. Thank you, Dan. Buenas noches. Muchas gracias. Buenas noches.